of Renewing the Mind 101. This week we're focusing on Christ Focus 101. And this week we're going to be taking the time to really align our thoughts with the thoughts of Christ. So this is a really exciting week. We're going to be learning about taking our thoughts captive, taking on Christ's thoughts. We're going to be dealing with vain imaginations. We're going to be dealing with meditating on God's word. And so this is going to be, this is one of my most favourite weeks in the book. And we're going to really dig deeper into the techniques of really fulfilling this mandate that we have, which is that we want to walk in the mind of Christ. So remembering we already have the mind of Christ, but many of us are not actively using it. So that's what we're going to be focusing on a lot more this week. And so I hope that you're doing really well so far in the study. We are at around day 36. So you should be really way past halfway point. And if you're not on day 36 and you're further behind, that is fine. Come back, watch this video uh, when you get the chance. And you should now start to be seeing evidence of a transformation in your life. You should now start to see the mountain starting to crumble. You should start be having new mindsets and a new uh, focus on the area that you've been dealing with. I know I have been. Um, and so just stay grounded, stay focused, stay humble. Sometimes at this point when we see amazing triumph, we're like, wow, yeah, I've got this. Um, but we want to stay humble and just continue to remember that we have to lean on the Lord and we want Want to learn how to practice and maintain this when the study's finished and I do recommend you know try doing the study for a few a few times so that you can really learn deeply a great focus and a great way and making it a solid habit of renewing the mind. Now, I know that sometimes you may feel overwhelmed with all the different techniques. Um, I would love the study to be longer, but I'm aware that that might make it difficult for people as well. But definitely treat this study like you're learning different forms and tools of renewing the mind and which ones are really going to be ones that are going to be the greatest tools for you in particular seasons that you're going to use. And so I do recommend that. Okay, straight on to week six. So day 36, we're going to be working on meditation. And so not meditation as the world knows it or the Far Eastern knows it, but as the word of God says that we should meditate. And those definitions of meditation is to murmur, to ponder, to focus, to think on, uh, speak on the word of God, think deeply and that's something that I really want us to get a handle of this week is we want to really start deeply thinking about what we're, th what we're thinking about and deeply thinking about the word of God and where they line up so that's key so in day 36 I want you to start thinking about are you really giving enough time to slow down and meditate on your thoughts well not meditate on your thoughts so much but be aware of your thoughts but also meditating on the word of God and so I love my favorite times to slow down is in the mornings um, when I'm in that kind of semi awake sleep state. Um, that's when the Lord just starts to speak to me in more of an in-depth way about things um, before the busyness of the day comes. And also it's my time to start meditating on things he's already told me. Now, for me, I'm in a in a certain season where that has become now a habit. I don't have to force that. That's something that just happens. And throughout the day, um, I'm learning more and more to slow down and meditate on the on what the Lord is saying to me. So you may be at a different position. And so sometimes it's handy. That's why we have things like the alarms, not forever. You don't have to use alarms, but there are good ways to train us to stop. Some of us are so focused with our lives that we are not prepared to stop and meditate on the Lord. And so that's just a good tool to train us. But also you could use key points in the day, as I've said, in the morning, before you go to bed, before you go to work. Those are really good times. Or maybe when you're on your lunch break are really good times um, to spend with the Lord. I know people that in the afternoon 
in their lunch break, they just take a walk and they talk, walk and talk with the Lord. And so that is something that is just great ideas um, that I've heard that some of you or some people that I know are using. So we want to kind of focus on this point on this day is that we tend to try and fit God into our schedules and that's okay sometimes when we're kind of starting out but there's a point when we go to a level of maturity in Christ where we want to start making God the focus and everything else has to fit in and around of our priority which is God because remember the Bible says that we're meant to give our lives as a living sacrifice. Well, I can't give my life fully if I have another focus. And, you know, the Bible also talks about that you can't have two loves. You know, you'll either hate the other or love the another. And, and um, I'm not sure if I said that right, but you know what I mean? We need to make sure that we have our main focus on the Lord and make him the centre of our life. So the Bible says, you know, focus on him. Focus on the kingdom of God and all else will be added to you. So I just want to encourage you to try to ask the Lord, are you pleased with how I spend my time and how I should be focusing my life around you and your word? And am I living my life as a living sacrifice? Good questions to start asking this week. OK, day 37. We're going to be looking into taking our thoughts captive. I recommend you reading 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 4 to 6, which talks about how we take those thoughts captive and that we're meant to take them with great, you know, force. It's not meant to be passive. Often, sometimes I would allow my thoughts to just like go around my mind and go around and around and around and around all these negative thoughts. And I wasn't really taking, I was being really passive, like, oh, okay, you know, that's not of God. Okay. Um, but I wasn't actually taking them captive. And if you can imagine for a moment, if somebody had committed a crime or they were coming in your house or whatever, trying to rob you, you would want to take them captive. What would that look like? Like you wouldn't be passive and saying, oh, could you just sit over there and right by the open door, you know, um, you would be holding them captive till the police would come um, or the right authorities would come. So, you know, you don't want to be passive about this. The enemy is cunning and he he tries to get us through our thoughts. He tries to pull us down literally in our minds. So this is a battleground and it's not something to be taken lightly or passively. So what we want to start practicing this week is knowing that they're there, which you should be aware now when the thoughts are coming in that are not of God. And now you want to start really taking them captive and being aware of the difference between your thoughts and just vain imag imaginations that comes from the enemy, that comes like a fiery, uh, you know, arrow to pierce you or to make you question, you know, where did that come from? And sometimes they're the most ridiculous imaginations for me anyway. And so we want to be aware of those differences. OK, so that's what we're going to be doing. And we are going to then move on to day 38, which is the fixed versus growth mindset. I love this. OK, so a great way to know how, like, how do you know? Like I get asked this all the time. Sophia, how do I know whether my thoughts are of the Lord or the thoughts are um, of the enemy or of my flesh? OK, so this day and um, this study is going to teach us the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So a growth mindset is all the things that God thinks on. It's all the ways God, when you look throughout the Bible, wants us to meditate on, you know, meditating on going from glory to glory winning the race, not giving up, being faithful, encouraging one another to keep on going. You know, it's those kind of mindsets that continue, don't see the obstacle. They see the obstacle as an avenue for greater growth. OK, but a fixed mindset is kind of like you've heard of the glass half empty kind of mindset where we're like, oh, well, this is just too difficult. I might as well give up. You know what? This is too hard. 
um, I can't, I, I, it's just, too, it's too beyond my ability to be able to do that. But we know that's not true because the word of God says that all things are possible, you know, for those who love God, you know, nothing is too hard for us. We are able, we're more than conquerors. We're victorious. That's the growth mindset. So that's how we are able to divide is a great way to know where we're sitting. So, you know, I'm not saying that we should, if you feel scared about something, you go, well, I'm going to ignore, ignore it. But what I like to say is that I'm aware that there's a part of me that's scared. But first of all, that's not who I am. And the truth is, is that I have authority over fear. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. He's given me a, a, a spirit of a, of love and a sound mind. And that is where I look at. Or if you're dealing with a real obstacle or a real trial, or even as we're going through this process, we are aware that there are mountains there that we need to deal with. It's not ignoring them, but it's a fact of acknowledging them, but they don't define us and they don't define our actions and they don't affect our emotions and how we live. So that's what we really want to try and really start to focus on. And in the book, I've created a, a chart that gives you some examples of what a fixed mindset is and what a growth mindset is. And you can find that as well. And that's on um, day 38. OK. And the final day of the week, day 39, is total immersion. OK. <clears throat> Another verse for you to look up is First Timothy 4, 15 to 16. OK. So, we know that God really wants us to, as I said earlier, immerse ourselves in renewing the mind and who he is. Um, and what I found the biggest breakthrough for me was when I made the decision, like I said earlier, to make God my focus and everything else had to uh, weave into that. OK, so um, so I really think that this sometimes can be a tip of difficult topic for some um, because it really is laying down our own agendas for our life. The key to breakthrough in renewing the mind is just really immersing ourselves in prayer, in renewing the mind, in meditating on scripture, uh, worship, um, walking in the fear of the Lord, walking and resting in Christ. These things are not just, you know, words this is our way of life. And if we've given our lives over to Christ, then this is what we're signing ourselves up for. Now, of course, we're all at different levels and stages in our journey. But this week and this day, we're really focusing on immersing ourselves as much as possible in the things of God. And um, we want our minds to be totally immersed and bathing in the truths of God. So there's no room for anything else. And some of you I've noticed already are saying that, you know, you may have had a goal of trying to lose weight or break the, um, you know, the strongholds of food addiction. But now you're meditating on the word of God like that's not even your focus, because isn't it amazing as sometimes we can be so focused on food or the goal or whatever it is that when we start immersing ourselves in just God and his richness and his beauty and his his, you know, just wonder that that is becomes our new thoughts and focus. And so that's what we want to be able to do. And I think that by the end of this study, you'll realize that this is this is really the key. And so by all means, it's not easy. But as we start to develop our relationship with the Lord, it becomes just as normal to us as eating. And so it becomes our desire. And so that's it for week six. I hope that you have a wonderful week, a prosperous week. It doesn't matter where you are at in this stage of this study. Do not give up because there is a reward at the end. And God's not after perfection. He's after those who are going to go hard after God with everything that they've got. And so I pray for you this week. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brother or sister in Christ. I thank you that as they're starting this journey, that they are they have been now continuing for over 35 days meditating on your word. I thank you that the mountains are now starting to be removed, are starting to crumble. That I thank you, Father, that they're now seeing this beautiful view that was, you know, that was um just 
blinded and blocked by this mountain in the way and that our father I thank you that the horizon that they can now see the horizon in their life Lord God and the horizon is you and so Lord I just pray right now that you will give them a, a renewed dedication a renewed focus to continue going to the end and that they will not give up and that they will not give up give up on this fight and this battle to rest in you Lord and so I thank you Lord in Jesus name amen so have a great week don't forget to look at listen to the SoundCloud for week six uh, the uh, affirmations and scripture prayers to help you as you go along and yeah if there's any other things you need just let me know and I can make sure that I can try and incorporate those questions or things you have in the future videos okay god bless have a good day bye